All righty. Good morning. Welcome to the very last day of the year and to the end of our series on how to actually change. What does it mean to set our hearts and our minds toward an intention that we have for life and then to do something about it? And so for the last few days, we've been working through some exercises to help you figure out who it is that you want to be um, when you look forward into your future, the kind of person, the kind of character that you want to have, and then how it is that you actually get there. So the process that we've been in is sort of like a, um, like a funnel that goes a reverse funnel like this. So what we've been doing is we've been in this top of the funnel in the idea time where we've been opening our mind to a bunch of ideas and a bunch of brainstorms. We did the old man, old lady exercise. We did the more or less exercise. That's the top where we're just, we're gathering up all of these ideas. And then after we do that, we start to close in and prioritize what is actually the most important to us. Because if we just stay at the top of the funnel, um, lots of people like ideas and lots of people are good at generating ideas. But if you can't move your idea to action, then your ideas are never going to happen. And you're going to find yourself making the same resolutions every single year because you're going to continue to stay in the same habit. So what we did yesterday was we moved to prioritizing, okay, what are a few statements of intention that I want to continue to explore? What would it look like for me to be different in this way? What's going to happen if I don't become different? What, do, what am I expecting my life to look like a year from now if I don't commit to this change? So what we were doing is we're moving our heart and our soul toward the process of change. We're giving ourselves times to contemplate, am I ready for this? Am I ready to be different why have I stayed the same? What has been the secondary gain that's kept me doing the same thing over and over again? So we've been up here in this open. We're closing in on a priority. And now this is the key moment because you can have lots of ideas. You can decide what's important to you. But if you don't move that intention into actual measurable action, then it is very, very difficult to actually change. And this is where many, many people falter and which is why they aren't experiencing what they want out of their life and what they're hoping for in this in this process of being made different growing in any way that you're looking to grow so what we're going to do is we're going to use a prompt um, that's going to help us actually now make decisions who is it that we want to become in the next week in the next month in the next year because the way that we grow and change is in one small measurable step at a time. That's how we actually move towards who we want to become. So we're going to use the prompt in order to, I will, and I'm going to put all this on my blog again, all the steps so that you can follow it. So we're going to take one statement of intention and I'm going to say in order to become this person, I will, and I'm going to start actually deciding what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use as an example, the one that I've been sharing, that's going to be my 2020 statement of intention, which is that in order to have more presence and less preoccupation. So I want to get to the end of next year and be able to say, was this a year that I um, grew in my ability to be present in the moment that I was in to use my attention, no matter if it was a hard situation or a great situation, whether I was at work or at home, that I was able to be present in the moment I was in and less preoccupied. Now, the thing about that statement is it's completely not measurable. So if I just leave it there, I don't actually know if it's happened. I mean, it's kind of subjective. I could ask people around me. I could evaluate myself. But if I haven't actually put any steps in place that represent being more present and less preoccupied, then there's no way for me to actually know if I've grown. This becomes a very frustrating cycle if you've ever been in it because you wonder what's happening. I don't feel any different. <clears throat> I don't know how to change. So this is the moment that you want to be in is to pay attention to what we're becoming using this in order to task. So this part is hard because most of us need a few edits before we can get to what we're trying to say. So I wrote down before we started in order to have more presence and less preoccupation, I will. And then I want to commit to an action for each of the spheres, spheres of my life. So I wrote at home, what is it going to look like for me to be more present and less preoccupied? So I wrote at home, I want to minimize distractions. Okay. 
that's not that's not good <laughs> because there's no way to measure if I'm minimizing distraction. So that's a good start. But now I need to ask myself the next question, which is how am I actually going to measure if I have minimized distractions? What's the actual thing I'm going to do by what deadline to show that I am minimizing distractions? So an example would be in order to be more present at home with my family, I will not have any devices in my hand after 9 p.m. starting January 1st. Now, I need to ask myself, is that something that I can do? Is that realistic? Is there a way that I wanna make it more realistic? How can I make it time limited, specific, measurable? I can't measure if I'm less preoccupied at home, but I can measure if I put my devices down at 9 p.m. by every night. And I, maybe I want to do that for 30 days. Maybe I want to see if it's part of being more present. So I'm going to keep on iterating on my task. And I'm going to say, okay, in order to be more present at home with my family and less preoccupied, I am going to not have any devices after 9 p.m. during the week. That's what I'm going to say. During the week, Mon Monday through Friday. I just want to give myself a little bit of margin. So if I say that, I can write that down. I can, I'm going to make that a 30 day goal. I'm just going to make that my goal for January. So your tasks can change underneath your statement of intention. So you don't have to have just like one thing you're going to do for the next 365 days. I'm going to start building some goals and tasks that move me toward the person that I want to become. So what I meant in my mind was I want to minimize distraction, but now I've got to think, what will that actually look like in my home? What will be helpful? What are some of the things that I want to do? What is it specifically that I want to do? I want to be able to get to the end of every day and every week and say, did I do it or did I not do it? If I say to myself, did I minimize distractions? I can lie to myself. I can edit the information. I can edit my own narrative. <laughs> I can make things worse or better than they actually are. If I actually say, did I put my devices away at 9 p.m. every night during the week this week, I get to get to the end of the week and say, yes, I did that. What happens when you have goals that you can measure is you actually develop agency. You develop what's called self-efficacy. If you're not familiar with that, self-efficacy is the ability to believe that you can do what you say you're going to do. When you start developing the confidence that you can do what you say you're going to do, you're going to be able to build into bigger tasks and things that used to feel hard for you will become easier. Life is still hard, but you become stronger. You're more able, but you've got to start actually putting the stake in the ground. This is where most people do not work. They do not want to do this. Put a stake in the ground, make it specific, make it measurable, make it have a deadline, give it, make it one task that's related to this big statement of intention on who you want to become. Perhaps for you, it's I'm going to call, I'm going to find and commit to a counselor by February 1st, 2020, because I know that I have some stuff that I have to work through and I've just been putting it off and I don't want to do it. So you put it on paper, you make it a deadline, you make it measurable and actionable. Maybe it's I'm going to call three counselors in January to find an appointment. That's specific. If I just say, I'm going to start going to counseling, I can just start going to counseling for the next six months and never actually get committed because when things get hard, when I don't really want to do the work, I don't have that goal in front of me. Most of us are extremely goal oriented. If we have a specific measurable goal with a deadline, we are much more likely to hit it. Now, here's what's going to happen if you don't hit it, if and when, because you will not hit all of them. When you don't hit it, this isn't a chance to be like, oh, I'm a terrible person. I'll never change. You actually want to use that opportunity to say, huh, let me be curious about myself. Why didn't I hit this goal? Was the goal reasonable? Was it attainable? Um, did I want to do it? If I didn't want to do it, why didn't I want to do it? What kept me from doing this thing? You can start to become really your own coach in a lot of ways by listening to what you're setting out to do and why you're not doing it. And that happens, that's as just as instructive as being successful is understanding why you failed. So, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna be successful or fail if you don't actually create those goals. So my second one, just to give you another one at work, I want to develop a better relationship with email. Is that specific time oriented measurable? No. <laughs> Because again, who's to say if I developed a better relationship with email or not? So a better goal when it's actually specific and measurable is I'm going to commit to an email system by January 15th. So I'm currently reading a book called Deep Work. It's a great book. 
I'm actually researching the way that I want to handle email moving forward. So I'm not ready to make a commitment to exactly what developing a better relationship with email looks like, but I can make a commitment to what my next, my very next step is toward that change. That way, when I get to January 15th, I can rewrite that goal for the next task. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to write this down in the blog with steps. That's usually easier to follow, but I wanted to come online as well, just because um, it's been awesome to be together over these last 30 days, because I really want for you all to realize that you can move toward those goals, that we can be made new. You know, something that I think is not talked about a lot in scripture that's really there, um, I'm reading through Isaiah right now, is this idea of people who stop thinking, <laughs> who stop thinking about things and just sort of go along with the world and the culture. And we get into these ruts so easily. We just, we actually stop thinking, is this the life I wanna live? Is, is this the, the path I want to be on? Is this the direction I want to be headed? And we, we lose that agency and that self-efficacy that God has built into us um, simply because we've, we've just assimilated to the burdens and the heaviness and the patterns of the world. But God really calls us not to conform to those patterns of the world, but to be renewed right through our minds. So what we're doing is we're entering into that renewal together when we actually are intentional about our life. Now, some of us are, it's really hard to do without a person who can lead you and guide you through that. And I understand that. So that's why I mentioned counseling. You might want to find a coach. I'm going to open up some coaching appointments in 2020, but whatever that looks like, I want you to know Take those steps because it works, but make sure that your tasks that are related to your intention are actually specific, measurable things that you can start working, working through and watch yourself change. Like it feels so good. Set those goals for yourself, reach for them. You can find the directions for this on the blog. Thanks you guys for coming today. Happy, happy, happy new year.